Hello and welcome to this EasyVFR4 video tutorial basic operations. Right after startup EasyVFR should look something like this. The main screen is your moving map and on top of that you have this at the moment empty blue box. This will later show a vertical profile of the airspaces when you are in flight or when you are planning a route. At the moment we simply ignore this by tapping on this button here on top switch it off and concentrate on the moving map. The moving map itself you can pan around and zoom. And here we have the first very special feature of EasyVFR4. You are able to zoom the moving map with just one finger. You don't need to do a pinch zoom. You only need to drag on the right side with one finger and you can zoom in and zoom out and with the same finger you can pan around. So if you are in a bumpy cockpit or something, it's super handy. One finger slide zoom, one finger pan. The direction of the zoom is pretty easy to memorize. Push the stick forward, the houses get larger. Pull the stick backwards, the houses get smaller again. On the bottom of the screen we will find some function buttons. The first button is the layer menu. Here you will find all the bits and pieces you can turn on and off on the moving map. You can set an airspace filter, set the smart map system, have some map presets, especially for navigation, checking no temps, checking weather. You have the different settings for no temps, weather, aero data, terrain, and geographical data. The next button is the calendar and with this calendar EasyVFR is able to filter out airspaces and notems that are not active in the given time. The next function is the route planning menu and the button right here in the middle is the flight mode. Usually EasyVFR detects a departure and an arrival automatically, but you can override this manually by tapping this button here. The next button is the main menu. And the last button in the row is the full screen button. When you tap on the full screen button, every other button will disappear and you run EasyVFR in full screen mode. This is pretty handy, especially if you work with a smaller screen device like a smartphone or a small tablet. Before we start to work with EasyVFR, we should be sure that we have the latest NOTAM data, aviation, weather and airspace use plan data downloaded. It's pretty simple. We tap on main menu, download menu and here we have all the stuff we can download. NOTAM data, airspace use plan data, METAR, TUF, German GAFOR and advanced weather. Just wait a few seconds for the data to download and then we are ready to go. So the main idea to work with EasyVFR is whenever you tap somewhere in the map once this info wheel appears and out from this info wheel you have access to a lot of data. You can do your route planning from this tapping point. You get airport information. You will get weather information. You get the notems that are valid at your clicking point or you can check the exact airspace structure at your clicking point. Let's say for example we want to check out the airspace structure right here at Köln Bonn control zone. This is super easy. Tap once, select airspaces and you get a perfect overview of the airspace structure right at this click point here. Here we have a little bar graph of the airspace elevations and here we have the text information. For example we have a control zone class delta from ground to 2500 msl. We can read the active tower frequency here. We see there is an airspace echo. And above this Köln Bonn CTR there is the Köln Bonn class Charlie. You also find the FIS frequencies. Here is Langen information. 
And a very nice feature here in this bar graph is you see the terrain altitude here in this green box and you see your actual flight altitude shown by this little aircraft. So you know exactly if you would fly in this altitude right to your click point you would end up in the control zone but you would stay below Airspace Echo and Airspace Charlie. The next thing we want to check out is the NOTAMs. The NOTAMs in EasyVFR are shown directly on the map a little bit like airspaces and if we want to get more information about this NOTAM it's the same as before simply tap somewhere on the map inside the NOTAM area choose NOTAMs and here we are in this pop-up window we get all the NOTAM information that is valid right at our click point we have this aerobatics we have some more NOTAMs that are valid here and the cool thing is Right from this list, we can either delete the NOTAM or hide it. If we don't ever fly to Afghanistan, I think we can trash this NOTAM. So we can clean up a little bit. And we are also able to skip to the next NOTAM, tap on the map, and get the information for the next NOTAM kringle. The same goes for the weather, tap somewhere, click on weather and in an instant you get all the meters and tufts in the vicinity of your clicking point. When you tap on an airfield or near to an airfield two things happen. The info wheel appears again as always when you tap once on the moving map and in addition on the bottom of the screen the direct info bar pops up. This direct info bar gives us basic information about the airfield. We see the available fuel, the airfield altitude, the radio frequency, type of runway and length of runway. And in addition we have this approach plate selectors. And with a simple click we are able to turn on and off the approach plates for this airfield. How cool is that? If we need further information we can easily get this here. The quick info window opens and gives us a lot of detailed aerodrome information. We see the runway layout and in addition all the actual information from the AIP. Further on we will find PDF charts and PDF data from the AIP. If we want to turn off the approach plate again, it's the same way. Tap on the airfield and in the direct info bar, deselect the approach plate. Done. Now let's check out the last function in the quick info wheel. This is the root function. Let's say we want to start at this airfield here. Tap on it. Select root. Now we get a list of objects that are close to our click point. And from this list we could select a direct to or in this case we select departure. The same way we select our next waypoint, say we want to fly to Gelnhausen, tap on Gelnhausen, the info wheel appears, click on root function and for the entry Gelnhausen tap on append. Confirm the yellow route and here we are. We easily created a route plan right on the moving map with a quick info wheel. Now you have seen how simple the basic operation in EasyVFR is. Tap somewhere on the map, select the function you want to work with and get your data. And with the route we built before, let's now check out the vertical profile view. That's activated by tapping the vertical profile button. The profile will be calculated. We now see a very nice vertical profile of our route plan. On the right side we can slide vertical. In the lower part of the vertical profile we can zoom horizontally. And in the upper part 
We can move around the view. You might already have noticed this little yellow polygon here. This is the sync slider. You can slide it around in the vertical profile and on a moving map it moves exactly into the same location as in the vertical profile or vice versa. You can slide it in a moving map and you see the reference in the vertical profile here. This is a super handy tool for flight planning. You can easily check your routing against the airspace's vertical profile or the terrain vertical profile or also against obstacles. I hope this tutorial gave you a little inside view of the basic operations of EasyVFR4 and thanks for watching.